I checked all over the internet and couldn't find it, so I'm making my own videos of the Minn Kota Ultrax bottom end rebuild. So without more ado, let's get started. And this is what we're doing, guys. We're replacing the bottom end on an Ultrex Minn Kota trolling motor. So I say, let's get started. Here we go. Okay, most important, disconnect your negative side of your battery. And follow these instructions at your own risk but there's a lot of helpful hints that you'll need to keep involved in. Have fun. Okay guys, what we have here is a Minn Kota Ultrex. This has, okay guys, this is the 112 thrust Minn Kota Ultrex and this armature's in the center and you'll be taking off both ends. 2D only, it's a 2018. If you look at your serial number code, on my serial number, it was an S-type. And just so you know, your serial number most of the time is up under this Ultrex and different than the other trolling motors. They have the stem coming down onto this part here and everyone in YouTube is taking this section off. Well, on this particular one, this one stays on and only this piece comes off and this piece comes off. It makes quite a bit of noise. I probably don't need to play it for you, but it's quite a big, big noise. There really wasn't anything uh, behind the prop, except for a little bit of uh, seaweed, which I'm going to use an emery cloth, run this and, and uh, All right, start taking these guys off. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, the first thing when I got them loose is we have water coming out from the housing, which is not good. In other words, this seal that's in there evidently did not seal. As you can see, I've put marks on here to identify the side and the marks of trolling motor. And this is, this is how you tune it sometimes. So just in case I made the mark so I can get it right back where I came apart. Okay guys, another evidence. So we got some moisture inside. You can look at this, see how wet. It's all wet. And it has some carbon or residue from the armature, which we're going to have to inspect once we get inside there. But it, unfortunately, this one did get wet on the inside. The bolt through bolts out, take this particular piece off. You should be able to pull this armature out th this way without even touching this side. Just to let you know, when I got my parts, they gave me a big long explanation of why they upgraded this particular seal. It's leaking. 
that should be a warranty repair and they should be telling all the Ultrex owners. So check your bolts and go around with some marine sealant, if anything, and seal off your trolling motors uh, if they're still dry. So once I found out that we had issues from the inside, I have to take this apart. First thing to take off is this nose piece that has your 2D transducer. Unfortunately, uh, what I had to do was push this outward and get some penetrant oil in there by pushing the whole mechanism over and tapping the inside, not the outside, with wood, not metal, I was able to get this off. Now look at the inside and how much debris is in there. And of course the bearing didn't come out. Usually the bearing's supposed to come out on the shaft. So that definitely needs to be cleaned out. The wire's going down to the transducer through that covering right there is just fine. Just needs to be cleaned out. This right here is the lineups for your through bolts. Just for a safety precaution. So once that's off, you have your armature available to move. And what we did was we moved the armature this way. Can't do it with two hands before we tried to attempt to take this off. Once we were able to move this armature out that way, I was able to take this area off, which I'll do right now very carefully so you have not the issue where you're gonna bend your brush plate. This brush plate, of course I already got it off and this is just for demonstration purposes. My brush plate was all waterlogged and not very strong and it, it had cracked and broke probably prior. Look at my brushes my brushes are all stuck open from all the debris that was flying around in there and I got myself a new brush plate. <clears throat> I was able to barely pull this out of there from this side. So my conclusion is that when you pull this, the bolt through bolts out, take this particular piece off, you should be able to pull this armature out th this way without even touching this side. Okay, as you can see, the debris totally coated this whole thing. No wonder it was making so much noise. Probably from the bearings first. I have to see if I can get that bearing out of that other side when I take it to a machine shop. And this really needs to be replaced. The Up here, there's a groove in it right here, which was probably leaking too because of seaweed and fishing line and stuff getting stuck up in there and acting as a machine mill. Look at that compared to this. Ta-da! Quite the difference. Nice. Coming back here at the armature housing, as you can see where the wires come out down through the stem in this way. When you disconnect your old brush plate, make sure you get that red wire on the correct side or you're motor's gonna end up going the opposite direction. So make sure your red wire is on that side, prong. Squeeze your prongs, make sure they make good connection because both of these came off pretty easy from the old one. Whatever you can to get that all cleaned out definitely has to be clean now let's look at the other side same thing look at the moisture got in there there's mildew all kinds of stuff so we let this dry out and get it all cleaned up before we reassemble take a look at this thing looks like we got the bearing stuck in there it's supposed to come out with the shaft I have to see if a machine shop can get that out of there or see if we can wiggle pry that out 
but it's best to do it properly so your bearings are seated in there the way they're supposed to be. So we'll start again when I'm ready to put this thing back together. Okay, one last thing I thought I'd show you. Got it, two bolts came out fine, but as you can see, this bolt here has a security. Okay, here we go with a trick to get these bearings out. Okay guys, I've got some grease soaked paper towel, cardboard, bar soap, whatever you want to use as a hydraulic. Hydraulic will move mountains. We're going to find out if it pushes this out. It's, looks like it's starting, but we'll see. Looks like it's working. Here it comes. Pushing it out. See there, guys? Bingo. A couple more and we'll have it. The reason you don't want to use just grease is because the grease will come out of the bearing ports, but the paper towels won't. Some people use cardboard, like I said. We'll run this a couple more times and then we'll push that sucker right out. The advantage is, is that we don't have to take this wire off all the way out from the stem to take it down to a machine shop. So this will save you a big headache. As you can see, we're getting further. See it moving. We got it. There's the bearing. Seized in there. That's how you get the bearing out, guys. Make sure you use wood backup, some padding on your boat. This is going to be wrapped, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to finish cleaning this out. Here and last but not least, don't forget your thrust bearing. Make sure you put that back in before your new bearing goes in. Okay guys, I gotta clean this off with some off. Tighten them a little. Loosen them a little. When it's coming down to where it gets hard, turn around and tighten it again and just work it back and forth. Because if you shear these off, like I did, you're going to have to have special tools to easy out unless you want to go ahead and buy one of these housings. But yeah, that moisture got in there and just Roded this plate. It's not made of metal. It's made of some kind of circuit board. Broke right in half. I'll get these bolts out. Okay, I released the spring up onto the stay it has right here. 
and it's still not moving very well. So I'm sure some debris got in there and clogged that all up. Go ahead and mark your lines, match it up to your other brush plate. Bring your other brush plate up. As you can see, I marked black on one side, red on the other. There's a new brush plate, quite a bit of difference, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, as you can see here, we got the before and afters, the other one's stuck open too, so I'm surprised this thing even ran. It did run, it was just really noisy. <clears throat> and if you can look over here, we got this ready to clean out. Don't have to get real uh, serious with it, except, you know, make sure it doesn't have any debris in there. We're gonna use some brake cleaner and get it all cleaned out. Check our wires. This wire here went out the connections and in the schematics that I'll show you in the descriptions, you can see how each and every piece is lined up and what's supposed to be in where. This side over here will show you how to get that bearing out. It's a little old farmer's papa trick. Okay, here's the parts diagram and parts list that's on the following pages. Shows you the Ultrex 24 volt. And here we are, 36 volt. Pretty simple, straightforward. Of course, this wire here, this part here has a wire coming out of it that goes all the way up the stem. It's part 106. Now, if you wanna get confirmation of your serial number and the year of your trolling motor, And or you can also go to trollingmotorparts.com and they have endless list of every single one of these parts. They're all in stock. And hey, guess what, guys? They even have the hummingbird graphs in stock. I saw some nines and tens in stock. And this is April of 22, so grab them while you can. But wealth of knowledge. This is just to give you an idea of everything else they have, all the way down to the stickers. So, check them out, guys. I got my stuff from them. I ordered on Tuesday and I got here on Friday. Here's the part number that I did. 108 bucks for my 36 volt. $30 in shipping, which was a three day shipping. And here's my brush kit. See the brush kit. It shows you everything it contains. Ta -da. When I got my, um, that was uh, a large O-ring. And then the largest O-ring goes on number one. The largest one goes here. I once in 2000. Uh, 15 and another one in 2019. I should have been notified that this has been upgraded and guess why it was upgraded? Probably because it was leaking. So they should have notified all the Minn Kota owners after you registered. They make everybody register. Do that. If you guys don't want to do that, here's some Flex, Lexel, Marine. You can even put it on when it's wet. Uh, it sticks to almost anything. And um, it's instantly... Okay, back to what we were doing. This bolt's fine over here. I have a replacement nut for that. And this one over here I've already drilled out and I'm getting ready to use my Okay guys, working these threads a little bit at a time 
Back it out, clean out, work it in a little at a time. Back it out, clean it out. So you can get your screw to go all the way down. Have a lot of patience when you're doing this. It's either now or by yourself. Another housing if you don't do it right. All right. Looks like we've got this one is good to go. Let's see how our thread job went. Nice. Mm, tightens up good. Okay, clean this housing off and we're off and running. Okay, we've got our cable clamp right there and our cable clamp screw, 70 and 72. This cable, make sure you wrap it around this cable clamp when you put this cover on. As you can see, we need to start, verify our parts 104, 102, and 100. As you can see, it's a little bit better outlined than what they send you. So make sure and download this parts list. So we can go 100, which is all our bearing, 102. It's our spring bevelier and our washer shim. They do, they're already installed in, confirmed. Okay, on this end, number 92, we got the larger of the o-rings that comes with here you're gonna find extra o-rings but get your calipers out and make sure you got the larger one the three mm-hmm this one here and the fatter one goes on the brush end got it got all my brush parts got the other collars together looks good now we're gonna take this piece right here where the seal goes and we're going to clean this all up and then we're going to grease the seal to keep it from folding or ripping. Okay guys, I'm hammering out this seal on the other side from the back side. And here we go. It comes out. Good job. Okay, there's the first front seal. And guess what? Yes, there is a second seal in there which we have to punch out from the back side without damaging this bushing. Okay. Okay, 32 is a seal. 34 is a paper tube seal that holds grease for the seals evidently. And the other one's a seal. And then over here we got number six, which is the drive pin.
very careful. Get it from this side. And there we go, is the paper seal. The other seal is put in face down. The paper seal is put in with grease and the other seal is put in face up. Okay, let's get out. Okay, I had to, uh, okay, I had to, uh, be creative on this last one because I didn't want to damage the bushing. So I slowly dremeled this down into this little metal wall right here. Then took a screwdriver, pried it up, got that pried up. And now it looks like I can grab it. Pliers. A little bit of a mangled seal, but I got it out of there nice and clean. Okay, I'm measuring the new ones that came. They're 101.92 or 1.94 on the small. Of course, the wide ones go at the brush end. One on there. I'll just back it up with. Okay, we're all clean for the new seals. As you can see, obvious reason why you don't want to be pounding on that thing with a hammer. You can be chipped real easy. There's one little spot there, but I put the shaft in and we're we're fine. But when you, you can see I did my little grind there. Just enough to get the seal out. That was it. I just barely scraped the paint. So gotta be careful or buy yourself a new housing. Okay guys, goes without showing, but getting ready to press this seal in. I want to get something the same diameter, we're about 28. All right, looks like I got the seal in just fine. I got the paper clip keeper in there. Grease seal packed with grease. I have our new grease seal for the top, packed with grease and getting ready to put it in through the top with my perfect size down till it stops snug okay it's loaded ready to go got the bottom bushing greased it's ready to go and went ahead and took a wire brush and cleaned the threads you can see one is clean one isn't so it does make a difference and i greased and put on the new through bolt O-rings and wiped out with brake cleaner and blew out the magnet. Looks set, ready to go. Now I'm gonna prep the brush plate and get it installed. Okay, I got the spring on again this time, clip out of the way. This top part's gonna go all the way around and it's gonna clip into this little notch right here. That's just a stay notch. I'm just going to swing this all the way around over the top and put it into that knot. And there we go. It slipped all the way over to the top. There's a little teeny notch right there before the groove. As you can see, the brush can still move and keep the brushes all the way out. So it's open. And when we get it in there and we get the armature through there, I can reach in and just flip that spring into the slot and it'll put pressure on the brushes. As you can see, I uh, repositioned those wires for the brushes away from the, the center shaft and uh, got everything mounted into the housing first. Got all the wires back there routed right and I got the ground wire run on the mounting screw. And I'm actually going to set this on uh, after I tighten it. Okay, and then I'll come back and snug them with a small ratchet with one hand. Okay, I'm going to bring the armature around and slowly put it in this side. 
while I'm holding this up. And then when the brushes come through, I'll be able to lift that brush up and that brush up. So let's give it a try. Okay, I got my thrust metal washer on there and fiber washer on there, ready to go. Got my bearing on this end, ready to go. Okay. Okay, I was able to get it in most of the way and it's coming, shaft starting through. And now I'm gonna put a screwdriver through and make sure those brushes clear that brush armature and slide it the rest of the way in. This should be able to go up flush. Okay, the bottom brush is fine and you probably can't see it, but I'm gonna lift this brush up with screwdriver and push this on to the shaft. Yeah. Okay, and as you can see, my marks line up. It's all the way through on this side. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. This side looks good. We just clap in that side. We have to make sure that this cable goes around that cable guy. And put this side on. Okay, it looks like this one's lined up. That one's lined up. Went right in, no problem. After cleaning the bolts, you can see I put some... This is just... And we'll put the bolts in. Okay, putting the bolts in. As you can see, I had to put the mark quite high on this side to get this bottom one in first. You're gonna wanna do the bottom one in first. I actually had it hooked to a pair of vice grips. And then bring it back to the mark, and then this one started just fine. Okay, guys, I tightened up the bolts. Of course, I put on the... shear pin. Tighten this up by hand. <clears throat> okay, I measure twice and cut once. My lineups are good. And it feels good. Let's bring it down. Stow position, make sure we got plenty of clearance. Wow, that feels good. Okay, let's try it. This is my Fuse, you got up here is 60 amp direct connect, but I'm able to shut it off by the special fuse I bought. Let's turn it on. And put this in the off position. That looks good. Ooh. No noise up here at all. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Look at that. That's six. This let it run for a little bit. Nice. It's on ten. Quiet vibrations. Keep my hand out of the prop. Hallelujah. Hey guys. Okay, that's the old Trex team. We can go to old Trex. It's how you replace just about everything down there. <laughs> So hopefully my mistakes is your gain, and now you know where to buy parts. This is pretty awesome. I'm gonna go fishing tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. We're gonna do it. Thanks, guys. Thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. Hope this helps. Bye. Nobody's gonna like that. It's like when we got it new.
Okay. And switch off and charge. nice thanks a lot for watching guys i hope this helps let me know in the comments thank you